responsibility of a final year college student receiving a reply for an internship program from three accounting firms, QR. So let's read this question properly. It says, find the probability a final year college student receiving a reply of an internship program from three accounting firms, Q, R, and S, is 0 0.55, 0 0.25, and 0 0.2. The probability that the student receives a reply from firm Q and is accepted is 0 0.95. The probability a student receives a reply from R and S is 0 0.3 each. So it says draw a tree diagram. So pretty much a final year student apply for three different accounting firms. The three different accounting firms are Q, R, and S. These are the three accounting firms, Q, R, and S. Now it tell we say, the chance of getting a reply from Q is 55%. Well, I would only apply for Q since that there's a high chance you'll get from get a response from Q. The chance of getting a response from R is 0.25. And it's look like one in every five people them reply to, so I wouldn't even apply for S. It says now the probability the students receives a reply from firm Q and is accepted meaning you apply and you get accepted. So I'm gonna put A for accepted. A for accepted and not A for rejected. This mean rejected. Chances of you getting accepted is 0 0.95. So pretty much once Q gear short, you get accepted. So that looks like the firm to go to. Chances are, when Argya showed, there's a 30% chance they get accepted. So I wouldn't even look on R and I wouldn't even look on S. So this is a tree diagram. There is nothing special to it. Nice and easy. So this is A, this is not A. Now it says determine the probability that the student will be accepted for a, for this. You determine the probability that the student will be accepted for the internship. All right, so we want the probability of A. Now the probability of being accepted is going to be the probability of apply for Q and get accepted. So that is 0 0.55 multiplied by, so it's the probability of getting accepted by Q and accepted. So that's 0 0.55 times 0 0.95 plus the probability of getting a response from R and getting accepted times 0 0.3 plus the probability of getting a response from S, which is 0 0.2 times the probability of S accepting you, which is 0 0.3. So this is what we have, the probability of A, which is 0 0.55 times 0 0.95 plus 0 0.25 times 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.3 that will give you the probability of A. The probability of A works out to be 0 0.55 times 0 0.95 plus 0 0.25 times 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.3. And that works out to be 0 so there is a 66% chance that the student will be accepted. So if you want to write it in words, there is a 65.75% chance. 
she will receive she will receive an internship so there's a high chance she's going to get an internship part b part b says Table two shows the length in centimeter of 20 spindles prepared by a carpenter to build a, rail, build a railing for an existing staircase. So the 20 is 1.5, 3.2, 6.1, 9.4, 11.0, 12.6. All of these value in here. It says determine the mean length. Now the mean length is equal to they like to call mean bar x. So you'll see this x bar, bar x, however you want to call it. Bar x, which is equal to the sum of x divided by n. So the sum of x mean add up everything in this table, then divide it by the number of spindles, which is 20. That will give you the mean length. So come do that now. Add up all of this, we have 1.5 plus 3.2 plus 6.1 plus 9.4 plus 11 plus 12.6 plus 17 plus 18.5 plus 20.2 plus 24.4 plus 25.2 plus 28.3 plus 28.8 plus 29.29.1 plus 30.4 plus 32.5 plus 34.6, plus 38.3, plus 38.4. So that's 409 divided, 409.5 divided by 20. 409.5 divided by 20. That works out to be 20.48. That's the mean length, 20.48. Now it says now to work out the modal length. The modal length, all right, means the length that most frequently occurred. Now in the table, this is the one that occurs more than once, 25.2. So the modal length is 25.2. Of course, just put tiny centimeter just to be safe just to be safe then what is median median is since it's 20 spindles the median will occur at 10 and a half so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten the median is going to be 24.4 plus 25.2 divided by 2 that will give us the median So 24.4 plus 25.2 divided by two, that's 24.8. So the median length is actually 24.8 centimeters. Now I just want to point out to you that just notice that the mean is less than the median, which is less than the mode. So what kind of distribution is this? This is negative distribution it is asymmetric because the mean is less than the mode which is less than the median all right so the data is skewed the data is skewed just wanted to point that out all right the data is skewed now find the interquartile range the interquartile range is q3 minus q1 that's interquartile range. So we can write that IQR interquartile range is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Let's go to the table and find out the upper quartile.
go into the table to find out the upper quartile. So the upper quartile is gonna be three quarter All right, so we'll split it in here. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll split it here. Cut all these to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Upper quartile is in between one, two, three, four here and here. So the upper quartile is the average of these two. All right, so the upper quartile is gonna be 32.5 plus 30.4 divided by two, the upper quartile is 31.5, all right? 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15, 16, 15, 16. Here's where the upper quartile is, the average of these two. All right, so average this to 29.1 plus 30.4 divided by 2, 29.75. That's the upper quartile. Once you find the upper quartile, to find the lower quartile, it's going to be a quarter of 21, and a quarter of 21 is 5 and a quarter. So we go one, two, three, four, five. So the upper quartile is the average of these two. All right, so we have 11.0 plus 12.6 divided by two is 11.8. So it's 29.75 minus 11.8. So the upper quartile works out to be, take that difference, 29.75 minus 11.8, that's 17.95, 17.95, that's the interquartile range, nice and easy. Part C, part C is telling us that a school cafeteria sells 20 chicken patties, 10 len, 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 10 lentil patties and 25 saltfish patties. And it says on a particular day, the first student ordered two patties, but did not specify the order. Calculate the probability that the first patty selected was a saltfish. Calculate the, the probability that the first patty selected was a saltfish. All right, so. You're selecting two parties, so the probability that the first party is a sawfish, meaning you definitely want the first one. I'm gonna let S represent sawfish. So it's a probability that you select two parties, right? And the first one has to be sawfish, and then O for the other. So you need to select a sawfish and something else. So it, the probability of getting the first one being a sawfish, meaning it can be a sawfish. Then you get a chicken patty, or it can be a saltfish, and then you get a lentil patty, or you can get a saltfish, then a saltfish, saltfish, then a saltfish. That will give you the probability of getting the first one to be saltfish. So the probability of getting saltfish, then a chicken, how much patty did it? 20, 10. 25. So 20 plus 10 plus 25 is 55. So for the first one to be selfish, that's 25 out of 55 multiplied by, when you take out the, the, the selfish, you get left back with 54. And if you get a chicken out of that, 54 is 20. Plus, we get a selfish. And then a lentil, you have 55, and you take out your selfish, that's 25, times, you take the only 54 left for the second draw, and a lentil is 10, 
plus chances of you getting a sawfish, then a sawfish is 25 out of 55 times. Get the next sawfish now is 24 out of 54. So when we work out this now, this will be the probability that the first party is a sawfish. So that's 25 out of 55 times 20 over 54 plus 25 over 55 times 10 over 54 plus 25 over 55 times 24 over 54 getting 5 over 11. So there's a 45% chance. So if I can write it in words, I can tell him that there's a 45% chance. Is five over 11, 45? Let me check. Five over 11. Yeah, that's 45. So there is a 45% chance of getting the first party to be a sawfish party. Now it says, given that the first party was sawfish, calculate the probability that the second party was not sawfish. All right, now calculate the probability that the second one is not. So then tell it given that the first one is definitely sawfish. All right, the first one is definitely a sawfish. So given that we know that the first one is sawfish, find out that the second one is not sawfish. So the probability, so the first one is definitely sawfish. And the probability for the second one not be sawfish. So let's write O for other then that means here it's the probability of getting a sawfish in a chicken plus the probability of getting a sawfish then a lentil. So that's gonna be equal to, we already work it out up here. It's just the first two, all right? So that's, 25 over 55 times 20 over 54 plus 25 over 55 times 10 over 54. That's 25 over 99. So there's a 25% chance that you get a different one. Now, that's all we have. Right now, there's another way you could have done this. You could have done it using the tree diagram method. All right, you could have done the tree diagram. Let me show you the tree diagram way. The tree diagram way you have three different party. You have sawfish, you have lentil, and you have chicken. All right, I'm just showing you how we could have done this using the tree diagram. The sawfish, lentil, chicken. All right. Then we are gonna say is you select either sawfish, lentil, or chicken. Now after you select sawfish, you can either select a uh, lentil, a chicken, or another sawfish. This is the part we are focused on. All right. Now chances of you picking the first one to be sawfish was twenty five out of 55 chances of you picking a lentil was i think 10 out of 55 and the chance of you getting chicken i think was 20 out of 55. now when you take up one party young girl left back with 54 so over here so i gonna have out of 54. if you choose selfish then you saw 24. If you choose lentil, then you have a nine. Well, if you choose sawfish, then you have still 10 out of 54. And then 
right? Yeah, so I still 20 out of 54, all right? This is what I'm saying could I use to help you solve these two questions. Using a tree diagram, chances of getting a sawfish, and then another one would be you can get sawfish and sawfish or sawfish and lentil or sawfish and chicken, all right? So this is just the tree diagram that you could use to solve that question, could. So we're done with this question. And now we'll go to the final question on the paper. The easiest question, even though every question is the easiest question. It says the displacement of a particle from a fixed position or a fixed point is given by S is equal to T cube minus five over two T square minus two T. Determine the velocity of the particles when T is 3.5. So to determine the velocity, first thing you need to know is the S. The velocity is dS by dt. So we'll differentiate this now. We're gonna get three T square minus differentiate five over two t square carried on the power to get five t minus two this is the velocity so now when t is equal to 3.5 so we can plug that in now when t equal 3.5 we're going to get that the velocity v is equal to three times 3.5 square 3.5 square, which is 12.25 minus five times 3.5 minus two. This will give us the velocity. So the velocity is three times 12.25 minus five times 3.5 minus two. That is 17.25. That's 17.25 meter per second. That's when T is, that's when T is 3.5. Now it says now if the particle is momentarily at rest, find the value at T for this position. Now a particle is at rest when its velocity is zero. So it's, we're setting three T square minus 5t minus two, we're gonna set that equal zero. That's when a particle is at rest. So we can go ahead and factorize it. Let's hope it can factorize easy. Signs are different, greater product negative. So I have two and one, three t and t. Signs are different, the bigger number negative. So minus goes here, plus goes here. And so the particle is momentarily at rest when t equal two, all right? We don't need to even look at this one because for this one, you're gonna get that three t equal negative one. And you're gonna get t equal negative one over three, but time cannot be negative. Time cannot be negative. All right, this one not applicable, not valid. All right, so this is this is just saying that t is equal to two. All right, so that's when the particle is momentarily at rest. Part B. Part B says, is that finished? That's all they wanted. Whoa. Part B says a vehicle accelerates uniformly from rest so i'm just doing a sketch i want it. it's gonna answer the sketch so i'm just putting up my graphs all right so it says a vehicle accelerates momentarily from rest from rest mean from the origin and it accelerates for 75 meters and then 
for another 120 at maximum speed. So it says a vehicle accelerates uniformly for 75 meters, then travels for another 120 at its maximum velocity. So it accelerate up to some point. All right, I don't know what that point is, but it accelerate up to some point. Then when it get to that point, just want to make it as accurate as possible. Let's work with that. When it get to this point now, when it travels 75 meter, it then travels at maximum velocity for another 120 meter. And then the vehicle, the vehicle, the vehicle later stops at a trap light, at a traffic light. The distance from rest to the traffic light is 240 and the time for the journey is 15. So that means it going back down now. So it says now, in the space below, sketch a velocity time graph to illustrate the motion of the vehicle. So it's at a vehicle stays so, and it accelerates uniformly. So this is velocity and this is time. It says that the vehicle accelerates uniformly for 75 meters. So we know that the area for this portion is 75 meters. It then says it travels for another 120 meter at maximum speed. So we know that the distance in here is 120 meters. It said the vehicle later stops at a traffic light. So after it accelerates, it offers slow down to stop. Yeah, offers slow down for stop. So the distance from rest to the traffic light is 240. So from, from rest to here is 240. And the time for the whole journey is 15. This is 15. That's the sketch. Go answer them question now. It says calculate the length of time the vehicle maintains a constant speed. Now, it maintains a constant speed in here. Now, in order to work this out now, first thing I want to point out is that the total area under the graph is 240 meters, which is the area of the trapezium, all right? The total area under the graph is 240. All right. So know that this area is 75, this area, and this area. But all right, so no, let's let's call it, let's call here T1. And let's call here T2, all right? Now, what do we know? I'm just writing down what we know. We know that 75 is equal to a half the base times the height, all right? And we don't even know the velocity that he was traveling at yet. We don't know that. All right, now let's see what we're going to do. This looks a nice one. Now, first and foremost, the total distance covered was 240. So if the total distance covered was 240, then let's write it down around here. Total distance covered is 240. Total distance covered is 240 meters. Now, if the cover total distance is 240, then that means also that the average speed of journey, the average speed of the journey was 240 over 15. 240 divided by 15, which is 16 meter per second. Now that's irrelevant for now. Let's, we're just writing down what we know. We also know that the distance, the distance, you know that the distance from maximum speed 
the distance from maximum speed to rest is the distance from maximum speed to rest is 240 minus the 75 plus 120. And that works out to be 240 minus 75 plus 120. Minus 75 plus 120, that's 45. All right. So what does that mean? That means that the distance in here is 45. The distance in here is 45. The distance in here is 120. The distance in here is 75. All right, so we're good. Now, what did they want again? They want to calculate the length of time the vehicle maintains a constant speed. The vehicle maintains a constant speed from T1 to T2 right here. Now, let's use some formulas. Let's use some motion in a straight line formula. You know, V square is U square plus two AS. Writing down some motion formula, V square is equal to U square plus two AS. The initial velocity was zero. All right. We don't know this final velocity, so we know V square is zero plus two a s so v square is two a two times 75 is 150 this is 150 times the acceleration all right that's what we know v square is 150 times the acceleration all right but then what is acceleration acceleration is this initial velocity minus zero over the time of T1. We're just trying to, once we find this velocity, we'd have gotten everything that we need. All right, so V squared is 150 times acceleration. Now, don't think I want to take this approach. I think I'm going to do it with simultaneous equations. I was trying not to, but I guess that approach will make it a lot easier. What do I mean by the simultaneous approach? What I'm saying is this 75 is a half the base, which is the base would be T1 times the height, and the height, let's call this V. Right, so what I'm getting is 75 times 2 is equal to T1 times V. T1 times V. Now, in here we have 120, right? And we have 120 is equal to length, the length is T1 minus T2. So the length is T1 minus T2 times the height of V times V, all right? Well, actually T2 minus T1. So 120 is equal to T2 minus T1 times V. So let's use simultaneous equation solve them. So what we're saying is 150 is equal to V times T1. And then we see another equation that is saying 120 is equal to VT2. <coughs> Boy, God. 
120 is VT2 minus VT1. But VT1 is 150. And so what we're then saying is VT2 is equal to, since VT1 is 150, VT2 is 270. Good. Now, finally, looking at it, we had that overall, the distance covered is 240 meters. Now, 240 meters, all right? We don't even need to use that last 240. Let's use this, 45. Now, the 45 right here that we just find, 45 is going to be equal to area of the triangle, which is a half the base, and the base is going to be 15 minus T2, 15 minus T2 times the height of V, times the height of V. So it's V over 2 times 15 minus T2. So if we multiply through by 2, we get 90 is equal to 15 V. 90 is 15 V minus V times T2. Now V times T2, we said that's 270. And so if this is 270, 15 V minus the VT2 is 270, so 90 is equal to 15 V minus 270. So we can add 270 to both sides to get that 270 plus 90 is 360. And so 360 is equal to 15 V. If 360 is 15 V, we can divide both sides by 15. So 360 over 15 will give us V. So work that out for me, 360 divided by 15, that's 24. So V equal 24. If V is equal to 24, then what we're then saying is that T1 is 150 over 21. So T1 is actually gonna be six. And if T1 is six, then T2 is going to be, what is T2? 270 over 24 is 11.25. Nice. So now to calculate the length of time the vehicle was at a constant speed. So now it traveled at a constant speed. Constant speed is equal to 11.25 minus six, and that's equal to 11.25 minus six, 5.25 seconds. So it travels at a constant speed for 5.25 seconds. Nice. So let's just check to make sure everything is correct. This velocity is 24 and T is six, half base times height should give us 75. Let's see, a half of five, half of six rather times a height of 24. I'm getting 72, not 75. This should be 75. So let's check back that we didn't make any mistake. 75 plus 120, 195, 240 minus 195 is 45, then Area of this triangle is a half the base, 15 minus T2. It's a half of 15 minus T2 times the height. And the height is V. You multiply it by two to get 90 is 15 V. 15 V minus V T2 minus 270. We brought over VT2, which is 270, 270 plus 90 is 360. Divide through by 15 to get 24, All right? But something is off, the calculations is not being right. Let me see now. Is VT, VT2 really 270? 
120 is equal to 270 minus 150. Yeah, that should be fine. All right. V is 24, T1 is 6, T2 is 11.25. Now let's check it out. 120 is 5.25 times 24. This is 126. So I'm not getting 120 either. We need to spot this calculation error. There's a calculation error made somewhere here. I want to clear all of this. All right, let's go again. Because we made an error somewhere. Oh boy, hate making those mistakes. Now, let's use a total distance then, all right? We can never go wrong with the total distance. The total distance covered is 240, all right? And so what that means is 240 area of trapezium is equal to a half A plus B over two which is a half A, A is T2 minus T1 plus B, B is 15 times the perpendicular height of V. If I multiply through by two, I'll get 480 is equal to V times T2 is VT2. minus VT1 plus 15V, all right? Now we said VT2 minus VT1, VT2 is 270 minus VT1 is 120. I think that is so, let's check again. Where did that go? Why did it disappear? How do I go back? I had it all written, oh gosh, why did it disappear? Having some technical difficulties. So again, total distance, tired of writing this now. The total distance, as we said, was 240 and it's equal to area of trapezium. Area of trapezium is a half the sum of the parallel sides. So it's a half T1 plus T2, half T1 plus T2, plus half T1, half T2 minus T1. Half T2 minus T1, plus B and B is 15 times the perpendicular height of V. If you're wondering where I get this from, let me show you where I got that from. Area of trapezium is a half T2 minus T1 plus 15 times perpendicular height V. That's area of trapezium. Multiply through by two to get 480 is equal to V times T2, which is VT2 minus VT1 plus 15V, all right? Now VT2 minus VT1, that's gonna be 270 minus 150, because remember we said that VT2 VT2 is 270 and VT1 is 150, all right? So this works out to be 270 minus 150 is one. VT1 is what? 150. Here's how we got it. All right, 120 is equal to 
VT 120 is VT2 minus VT1. So all of this is just 120. One twenty B T two minus B T one. We said that's one twenty. All right. So B T two is two seventy. Two seventy minus one fifty is one twenty. Plus fifteen B. We subtract them. This is four eighty. When we subtract we get that 15B is, 15B is equal to 360. Then we divide both sides by 15 to get V is equal to 360 over 15. 360 divided by 15 is 24. V needs to be 24. All right, now if V is 24, we can go here now. So a half base times height is 24. So 24 T1, 24 T1 is 150. So 150 divided by 24 is 6.25. That was the mistake. Okay, T1 is 6.25. All right, so T1 is 6.25. Now we spot the mistake, T1 is 6.25. Now that T1 is 6.25, we can find T2, all right? Now, V is 24, so we divide both sides by 24. To get 120 over 24, I think that's five. And so five is T2 minus T1. T2 minus T1 is five. If T2 minus T1 is five, then this distance is 11.25. So good now. Finally, yes, thank you. This was a nice question. It was sort of challenging. And so the vehicle traveled at constant speed for five seconds. Oh, that's a good one. It says now calculate the maximum velocity of obtain. We calculate it already. Maximum velocity is 24 meters per second. It says calculate the acceleration of the vehicle. Acceleration of the vehicle is a gradient. And so the acceleration is equal to the velocity of 24 divided by time of 6.25. That would give you the acceleration. So let's just write it around here. So the acceleration, acceleration A, is equal to maximum velocity, 24 divided by the time, 6.25. I'll get the acceleration. Three point eight four. Nice. So that was the acceleration of the vehicle. So. The acceleration of the vehicle was 3.84 meter per second square. That's the acceleration of the vehicle. Nice and easy, soft. That means this paper was a very easy paper, no trick question to it. This one, this one was a little bit spicy, but nothing too challenging. This takes care of 2017.